Okay, uh, thanks for coming in on the, you know, this late hour on the day, and we have our final presentation by Tom and Fong again. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. So, hello. Uh, today we're just going to, this afternoon, we're going to talk about the uh, downstream integration and, and packaging. Um, my focus uh, is mostly on RPM packaging, but there's analogy in, in DEB. Uh, DEB packages and initially VPPs tended to emphasize DEB packaging and uh, there were RPM packages available but uh, we, uh, we, I've been working and others have been working all along trying to move things to the point where we can get these RPM packages available in downstream repos with a focus on CentOS and uh, for now and maybe well in the future perhaps possibly. But certainly CentOS, CentOS NFA SIG, most likely. And we're just going to talk about the packages and how they're arranged, and then uh, fairly briefly, and then we'll get into the the uh, um, orchestration, which uh, which uh, Fung is going to talk about. And my again, my name is Tom Herbert. I'm from Red Hat, and Fung Pond's from Red Hat too. And I don't have a red hat on right now, but I'm sorry. <laughs> so. Again, we're going to start with talking a little bit about the, the packaging. Um, again, the, both uh, deep, uh, VPP and Debian packaging is available. And recently, SUSE's kind of joined the VPP project. And um, so there's a third RPM um, uh, you know, option. But I, I'm hoping to get, get to talk to some SUSE people to make sure they're happy about the approach that's being done right now in terms of Building, building for SUSE and building packages for, for SUSE and make sure that is okay. So, we're, and, then, uh, and then following that, we'll talk about the orchestration, um, uh, orchestration of VPP, and then uh, uh, Fung will take over. So let's talk for a moment about 1704 release packages, and we'll talk about what's available right now, and then after that, we'll talk about, I want to talk about the, um, the, the issue with the, the, the uh, DPDK packages and how DPDK is bound in with BPP and, and, uh, and, so, and what the future looks like in terms of what packages might be available in, in, um, in CentOS. So right now, what you do is, since we don't have this in a CentOS repo, is it, it, we have our own repos in the Nexus uh, repo that are, in, that are supplied to us from the Linux Foundation that we use in VPP. And if you create this file in, in, um, in your uh, uh, repos.d database in your uh, CentOS system, and then you can do yum install VPP and it will just work. So that's the way things work now, and it'll install from the Nexus repo, but it's not part of the downstream CentOS distribution yet. This is what's in the RPMs. Again, there's, um, with Honeycomb, uh, th th what I got here is there's, there's the Honeycomb has been split into kind of two projects, and one is the generic Honeycomb, and the other is Honeycomb specific to VPP. And I, I, I you know, so it's a bit of a work in progress, but this, this comes from the new Honeycomb project but the, the other uh, the VPP RPMs, of course, as you might expect, are re the, um, the VPP RPM itself, lib, the devel with the header files, debug info, of course, and, um, and the plugins. And we'll talk about the plugins a little bit more in, in, the <clears throat> in a minute. And the, in addition to that, the other projects in FIDO um, generate RPMs as well. So, uh, for example, Honeycomb, I just mentioned, and you just heard about NSH SFC from Danny. And the, in addition, the, the, the our, uh, API Honeycombs for each of the language bindings, one for Java, Lua, and Python. So ultimately, uh, we also formed a DPDK RPM project uh, there's a companion um, RPM, I mean, a companion DEB DPDK project as well in FIDO. And the, uh, their idea in the DEB project was to get DEB packaging for DPDK that I, that I believe wasn't available upstream. 
but we, we started a companion RPM DPDK project. We do have DPDK, I mean RPM packaging available upstream from DPDK, and as a matter of fact, we're using that right now in, in, to build the DPDK plugin. But, um, oh, in the future, though, uh, we, this project might be a place to, to work on um, common dependencies and issues of DPDK configuration to make sure the DPDK is uh, properly configured for, uh, for, in, for um, VPP. Uh, part of the issue is that downstream um, users uh, have other data planes they use, which also use VPP, and for those, things are configured in a slightly different way. So that's where things become a challenge. So uh, the official, for example, OVS DPDK official packaging, which I think is uh, 2.6, um, OVS 2.6 of DPDK 16.11, maybe, is, is part of the cloud SIG, uh, which is the, the, the sort of CentOS distros um, download of OpenStack. And since we're all stackers here, we're probably interested in that. But, and in addition, more recent packages are being built in CBS. Uh, which is a CentOS build system, but we don't as yet build um, VPP or DPDK specifically um, as uh, newer than this officially. There's, an, there's another uh, thing called the NFE SIG, and the SIGs in CentOS are kind of like special interest groups and they're places to put stuff, which isn't necessarily part of the real official CentOS distribution. So the NFE SIG is a particular example where we can put things that are a release ahead of what's officially available in um, the downstream version of, of OSP, or the downstream version of like Red Hat OSP, for example. And, and that might be VPP. So that's probably where we're gonna go, and uh, it should be available there um, once we uh, solve a couple of issues that we have uh, upstream with, uh, with building a source RPM and making a source RPM that, or, or a, a tarball distro that we can build from that's independent of Git. Um, currently, the, the uh, VPP uses a plugin system and that kind of makes things easier in some ways and the, the packages are built in, a, in, in kind of an ephemeral directory and, or instead of being built in, in build data like they used to be. And in the, there was a bit of a change, but actually improves things. It's a, it's, um, a new build system that uh, was pushed um, with some recent patches, largely by, by Damien. So again, um, DPDK is really nothing but, a, nothing but a set of libraries and utilities. There isn't really any binary DPDK to run. There's no agent associated with DPDK and the utilities are bind utilities on um, various other things, test PMD and some things which aren't specifically needed to configure VPP. Um, but otherwise it's just a library. But VPP builds DPDK as, uh, as a plugin and and it's created at build time. In other words, the DPDK configuration, the DPDK is compiled with, at, at the same time, VPP is compiled. We, don't, we cannot consume an externally created dependent, or we're not, can't create a dependency on an external previously created DPDK RPM. But in the future, maybe we might want to do that. Have a single DPDK RPM that will supply both OVS DPDK and, um, and VPP and maybe some other, um, some other uh, consumers. What's in the RPM? So with the new build system, uh, the VPP plugins, as you can see, DPDK, it's in boldface here, is actually in the VPP plugins RPM. We used to, in earlier versions of VPP, there was a DPDK module bill. Now Debian does things slightly different um, here uh, because they, st they use DK DKMS and they still build the kernel module for, uh, for IGB UIO, I believe that they use it. We don't use that in, in um, uh, RPM packaging. And the other, other things here are, whoops, 
The other things here are the uh, various uh, um, the, the libraries associated with the, the different plugins associated with VPP with functionality like SNAT, um, memory interface, lib plugin, the uh, flow per packet, and the various components that are pretty much familiar with people that are familiar with VP, VPP. Uh, we have, so uh, we, we have uh, VPP control and VPP itself, the two binaries, and the service stuff, the starting and stopping VPP is packaged with its RPM. And then separately, we have the APIs. Um, there's a separate RPM for each of the API sets for Python, Lua, and Java. And then there's another RPM that's created by the NSH project. And in addition to that, uh, there is the VEL has the header files, the libs, VPP libs are as expected, all the libraries that you need if you were going to write an additional plugin, you could actually do it um, without, in theory, in the source code. And um, so on. And so that, that's all I'm going to talk about. Again, the only point I'm trying to make is this is what we have now. Uh, we don't have any major impediments to make VPP available downstream in CentOS NFE SIG as long as we don't, we're not expecting to use a common DPDK. So it'll be the same RPMs you see right here. And hopefully we'll get those um, uh, upstream by the 1707 release, or downstream by the 1707 release. And now I'm going to turn it over to Fung, who will talk about orchestration. All right. Um, I'm going to go over um, basically how we deploy um, uh, vital projects now that we have everything packaged. Um, we're going to talk about two different ways, right? So one is, you know, uh, in a standalone sort of environment, and also uh, in OpenStack. So first is um, Puppy FDIO, which is a project that lives in um, FDIO. Um, it will deploy um, FIDO projects like VPP and Honeycomb in Linux. It uh, it is written in Puppet, as its name suggests. Um, why Puppet? Um, because it gives us a item potent way to manage the configuration file and the service. Um, so it will, you know, bind interfaces to VPP. It will configure, you know, other VPP options, uh, and it, it makes sure that the VPP service or Honeycomb service, as whatever the case may be, is in the desired state. Right? For example, running. Um, so. Um, so that gives you an easy, easy way to run this over and over again and, and, and achieve the same sort of state uh, all the time, right? Um, so this, this um, tool can run in standalone mode or it can be part of an uh, OpenStack installer as well. Uh, right now, we do use it in uh, triple O uh, installer, and, and that's part of the OPNFE Apex project uh, we're going to talk about next. All right, so um, brief over, uh, overview of uh, OPNFV. Uh, so OPNFV is an uh, uh, open platform for NFV. Um, it is a open source way to do system integration um, or for NFV specifically, right? So it, um, you know, the, the goal is to develop NFV um, features uh, using upstream uh, uh, projects and test them uh, and integrate them um, in a uh, continuous C, you know, CI CD sort of environment. Um, so um, it, it gives you um, a, a way to develop new features uh, for NFV uh, quickly, right? Okay, so this is the um, platform overview uh, picture. So you can see, you know, we can pick different upstream projects like OpenStack, OpenDaylight, um, other SDN controllers, um, you know, various data plane uh, choices. We, you know, we integrate them, uh, we test them, and then when we identify features that are missing, we develop them in the community, and we run, run through all of those 
um, in the CI environment, right? Okay, let's see. All right, so OPNFV composes uh, what we call scenarios, right? So those are the, you know, you can call them test cases or you can call them use cases um, and that, that, we, that we compose, right? That we put together um, and develop and test. Uh, so the um, FIDO-related scenarios are, you know, are called, you know, OS, uh, which, is, which is OpenStack, uh, SDN or no SDN. So no SDN, uh, in, in no SDN case for, for FDIO, it would be the networking VPP ML2 driver. And of course, we can also use Open Daylight. Um, and in the Open Daylight case, we can, you know, we, we, we can make Open Daylight do L2 and L3, or we can use the Q router or the L3, neutron L3 agent, uh, in which case we call them Open Daylight L2. Right, so those are all different scenarios, um, and, and they, are, they, are, they are separately uh, developed right, and, and, and tested. Okay. okay, so Apex itself is based on OpenStack Triple O project. Um, it, um, it basically automates the entire uh, installation process for all those projects, right? Um, so, so in upstream, for example, in uh, Open, OpenStack or Open Daylight or FDIO, um, we tend to focus on you know, just those projects feature itself. But the integration itself and the installation is basically handled um, by Apex uh, in this case. Um, we, we, we use one command uh, using one step. We deploy to a, either a virtual VM environment or a bare metal env uh, environment. Uh, and we do use both. Um, we use the virtual environment uh, particularly for uh, development. And, and you know, this gives you a very quick way to stand up a cluster of nodes uh, where you can really add new features very quickly. Uh, and the bare metal, of course, is, is very useful for, you know, if, if you want to do scale testing, if you want to do performance testing, um, then that also gives you uh, a way to do that. And we do have that running in our CI environment that runs every 24 hours or, or so. Right? Um, the latest release of Apex uh, is based on OpenStack Newton release. And the reason we use a stable release is just because it's more stable. Uh, we, we want to focus on the features we're developing, and you know, in this case, for example, it would be you know, FIDO features. Uh, for example, we're, we're integrating ODL, um, controlling VPP, or Honeycomb and VPP, so we want to focus on that. And so we, we do freeze the OpenStack you know, release, and, and so we, we sort of minimize uh, the, the damage that OpenStack itself causes. Um, we do use the latest version of Open, Open Daylight um, because that's the only version that we can, you know, get VPP support and, and Honeycomb support. Uh, and the VPP version we use is uh, 1704, right, which again is, is fairly recent. Um, all right. Um, the, the end result, right, of, of a Apex deployment is a OpenStack environment that is running and it's ready for um, running any kind of test, like a function test. Uh, or uh, a performance test, right? Um, so in our uh, CI environment, we do run uh, various tests after deployment or installation itself is done, right? So it's not just deploying it, but we, we, we do also run tests on them. Okay, so um, this is a slide that, that, um, uh, that I stole from uh, a you know uh, FDS project, uh, which shows the architecture of the um, FDIO ODL uh, deployment. Uh, in this case, ODL is doing uh, L2 forwarding only, so that's east-west traffic. The neutron L3 agent is handling the north-south uh, traffic. So I wanted to just point out what are the pieces that Apex is deploying. So in this case, um, Apex deploys. You know, the OpenStack services, the Open Daylight, Honeycomb, it installs all of those components, it installs VPP as well. It binds the tenant network interface to, the, to, to VPP itself. 
um, it sets up um, the OVS bridge and connects it to uh, the external interface, right? Um, the piece that um, it does not do is, you know, the VXLAN tunnels, uh, the VMs, right? Those are all handled in OpenStack, right? Those are all done when you create a networking neutron, when you create a VM in Nova, right? Um, so, so Apex really, you know, deploys all those all of those services and configures them on all those separate nodes. And those nodes uh, can be either a virtual machine or it could be a bare metal node. Uh, in the case of HA deployment, uh, in which case there would be multiple controllers, uh, in our case it would be three controllers, it does set up uh, things like uh, clustering for SED, right, in the case of networking VPP, it configures uh, open daylight HA, uh, and it makes sure, it does make sure that all the services are, are started correctly and configured correctly, right? Um, so, so when, when we have a successful deployment, you do know that everything has been uh, started up correctly. Right. Um, okay, so how do you do this? Um, this is, you know, uh, installing and deploying Apex is fairly easy. We deliver uh, RPM packages. Uh, we also deliver a ISO Im image that you can uh, load onto a compute node. Um, and it's a single command to deploy. You supply three files, a network, set, network setting, a inventory, um, and a deploy setting file. Um, the network settings uh, specify your network environment, right? So we, we support using a single network, that is if you have very simple network, um, one single network for, for, for basically everything, then you can do that. You can also separate it out into as many as you want, right? API network, storage network, uh, whatever else. Uh, you can have all of them separated or you can have all of them in one. Okay. Um, the inventory file is to store things like um, IPMI information so we can pixie boot stuff. And this is only needed for uh, bare metal environment. Okay. Um, so you issue one command and the result is basically running OpenStack environment, right? So at the end of the, the this command, you can do things like, you know, create a network or create a VM and, and do whatever else uh, that you need to do. Um, the, the more detailed instruction on how those files are structured uh, can be found in the link. Uh, I want to go to each one of those files and talk a little bit about them. Uh, the network setting file, again, you know, it's, it, it, it defines things like, you know, my external network range, my gateway, my, DNS server, my NTP server, uh, things of that nature. Um, we do ship um, a few of those uh, with Apex, right, for both IPv4 and IPv6. So, so you can use them, especially in a virtual environment. It's very useful. You don't, you don't have to actually create one or invent one, right? You can use, use the stock one. Um, and, and that's actually true for all three of those files. Uh, the, the inventory file, all right, so that, that's what it looks like. It's a simple YAML um, where you just, the, the crucial information here is really just the IP address of the IPMI and the credentials for them, right? So it's basically how we get to those bare metal nodes. Uh, in, in the virtual environment, this is automatically generated because we get to define those VMs. So you don't need that, right? The CPU, memory, disk information are, are in fact, um, optional, right? They can, be, uh, they can be filled in during the introspection phase uh, for tri triple installation. So they, they can be there, but they don't actually need to be, right? The, the crucial information is just uh, how we get to it. All right. Um, the deploy setting, so this is the file that really defines what is a scenario, right? So this file tells the installer what features to enable and disable, and, and, and most features are you know, are, are basically a flag in there that's true or false. So you can very flexibly use, create your own scenario or use one of the many that we ship, right? So for FDIO, right, this is what a FDIO L2 looks like, right? You know, we, we can say HA is false. We don't, right, we, you can also say true, right? We, we say SDN controller is open daylight. Uh, we don't want to use uh, SDN controller to do L3. 
uh, the version of the ODL we want to use, and, and other features that you can flexibly enable or disable, right? So you can compose your own uh, scenario file, or you can use one of the ones that was shipped, and you know it's tested, right? So, so in our CI system, we do test all of the ones we ship with, and they are verified to work, right? Um, so, okay, all right. So that's what's there today. Um, what we're gonna do next, uh, you know, our next release, uh, which would be about you know, uh, four or five months from now, we're gonna upgrade to the next uh, OpenStack release, Otaka. Um, one thing we're, we are talking about um, adding support for is uh, OpenStack's master branch support so that you can, if you would like to, uh, use the uh, head of master for OpenStack every time you build and deploy uh, so that you can actually develop on OpenStack itself uh, using this environment. Um, this is a, a bit more adventurous um, depending on your use case, but uh, it, it could be useful for some, for, for some right? Um, and then the, the other feature that, that would be really useful for uh, VPP is we're gonna add uh, DVR support uh, for VPP so that L3 is done on every, every compute node, right, rather than centrally. So today it's, it's done in one node, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna add. And I believe that's it. Um, if anybody have any question. I'd like to add um, one yes. comment. The first thing in our earlier presentation that we did today, when, when Fung talked about the, these different options in ODL, those were the same options that, that uh, uh, we went over in the earlier presentation too. So that described how they work internally, and here is described how to orchestrate them. And the second point I wanted to make is that the Puppet FIDO project is where also, there's no theoretical reason why we can't use Ansible. It's just that initially it was Puffet, and uh, when resources become available, we'll, we, we as the whole community, I mean, we'll uh, hopefully be able to do, yeah. uh, do Ansible as well for orchestration. Any questions? Uh, so, so Triple O is the upstream for director, and you know, all of our development, once we're done with integration into Apex, we actually go upstream to Triple O. So all the features that we're adding, for example, VPP, we are already adding to Triple O. So, so for example, VPP is already in Triple O. Now, when it makes to OSP, I think that's more of a product question, and I think that's more, you know, roadmap sort of things. Yeah, we're, uh, we're upstream here. We're not yeah. really product people. Right, but um, upstream, but yeah. it is all there, right? So we, we try not to maintain too many patches from, from upstream, right? So. Thank you. Um, have you had any thoughts about offering containers as a sort of first class delivery mechanism? Absolutely, absolutely. So for, for us, we don't, we don't make preferences to one another. If there are, you know, so OPNFE as a, as a community basically just listen to um, operators' uh, requirement. And if there are desire to support container or anything else, um, you simply say, we want that, right? That's something we desire. And you add a scenario and we add it in there, right? So, so Apex today, for example, supports, you know, 20 scenarios, 20 different scenarios, right? So those are you know, the FDIO subset we're, we're listing here, but really we don't make judgment. We, we don't say we don't want container or we don't want something else, right? So, you know, if, if there is a use case, if they, it is something that is desirable to have, we can certainly um, add that. And, and Triple O itself, and we also will evolve with Triple O too, right? So as Triple O uh, evolved into using container for installation, we will naturally do that too, um, but of course there could be other use cases rather than the installation process that, that does triple, you know, that, that does container too, right? So, yes. All right, 
I think that's it. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you.